Around 3 billion people worldwide still don't have basic connectivity, while the rest of the world indulges in advanced technology. Well, World Mobile is a blockchain-powered network aimed at un the unconnected. The company aims to build telecommunications infrastructure in rural Africa specifically, while providing connectivity at a cost 12 times lower than conventional networks. Let's find out more now from the World Mobile CEO, Mickey Watkins, who is currently in Barcelona and joins us virtually. Mickey, thanks for your time this evening. Now, now, this just sounds like a no-brainer without having to know too much about uh, the intricacies of, of blockchain and all of the, the techno what's it that go with it. Uh, um, based on your decision to focus on Africa, uh, in what your team has been able to deduce, what's the current state of Africa's telecommunications industry and how, how is this affecting their various economies? So telecoms alone uh, accounts for around $90 billion of revenue throughout the continent. But Sub-Saharan Africa is home to 15% of uh, the world's population, approximately, and only 6% have internet. So it's in a very bad state. 750 million people, approximately, without connectivity or without meaningful connectivity. There's 2G coverage, for sure. Mm. Uh, but 3G um, high quality is just about manageable. But 3G low quality, you can't do much. You can't have a Zoom call like this. You can't have live, live information. So for high quality internet, you know, it's very sparse still in the continent. How can blockchain technology, however, have an impact on that? Why do you believe that the adoption of this in Africa is necessary and will indeed change lives? I think there's two elements to this. The, the first element is for the actual subscriber themselves. You know, we don't have access to our own data. Mobile network operators, big tech companies, they've, as time has passed and revenues have sunk and the market becomes saturated, um, they have access to our data, but we don't. So Self-sovereign identity is something that we should all strive for and something that I hope will start in Africa and then spread to the rest of the world. But actually, in terms of infrastructure, you've got so much of the land that's unconnected. So mm. Across the world, this is not just an African problem. This is a, a global problem that it's too much for any one company to fix alone, not the Facebooks, the Google, the Microsofts, or the thousand mobile network operators. So working together with the people to build a mobile network where they tap into the a trillion dollar industry has to assure that they get paid for the return of the investment they invest into themselves, right? Because they're buying infrastructure. So having a system that allows proof of coverage and proof of service for them to get paid automatically when someone roams onto their node or off of their node should be done on the blockchain. It's the most efficient way to do it. It's the most transparent way to do it. And it's the most immutable way to do it. From what you've seen um, uh, uh, of a potential market in Africa, you're dealing with a very young market uh, in Africa, and that's expected. Uh, that population of young people in Africa is expected to be in the majority very soon. Are you expecting that to mean that they will be early adopters to new technology uh, like this? What has what your feedback been from a grassroots level? They already are early adopters, an average mm. age of 19, 19 years old. Um, the trillion dollar mobile money market, 70% of it is from the African continent. You mm. know, the legacy banking systems that we have in, in the other parts of, of the more established worlds, they're run by oligopolies. Um, these, the younger generation, they're the people that are going to take us forward and, and break through the, the problems that we've had previously and instill a new system, a new system where it complies to regulation, but where the people have the power and the people have control of their own identity and the people have a choice, choice of freedom. Now, you're talking about an investment of around $350 million. That's a lot of money. But you're going to have to build a lot from the ground up. Um, uh, how, how do you intend to use that huge fund? It's a sharing economy, right? So it's the people that are actually use, using the funds. They're the ones that bring in the capital. They're the ones that are reducing the OPEX. So when you have money as a typical telco, um, it's very CapEx heavy. It's very OPEX heavy. Well, our business model manages to offload the CapEx and offload a majority of the OPEX because everybody's earning from it, not one single entity. So we think it can go very far. Any, any investment we bring in, um, any, any people that are coming into the shared economy and actually buying infrastructure and owning part of the mobile network globally, um, it can be huge for, for everybody. And there's going to be much more than $350 million needed. Uh, it's, in, you know, it's in the billions and billions. Mm. But what it isn't is in the trillions. The model is much better than existing mobile network operators fine-tuned to connect the unconnected. And, and how do you see yourself competing with the established um, operators in that space? You've got some giants working in that space already that perhaps haven't moved with the times as what you're, you're putting on the table. 
Some of them we're already working with and collaborating. We're, we're all about collaboration, but ultimately um, we can go where they cannot go. And we're going where they cannot go. They can't serve those areas. Their serve areas are still unconnected. And that is evidence of the fact that they can't get there profitably. So our target market is the underserved, the underconnected. And eventually it may be the, the connected because our business model is very, very interesting and can, can create um, a lot of benefit for everyone on the grounds. But first of all, it's the unconnected and the underserved. You've already partnered with the Ministry of Education and Vocational Training in Zanzibar. You're focusing there on providing free, unlimited internet to schools across the region. Again, uh, schools in the rural areas, it looks like, would benefit immensely from this. How important are those kind of partnerships going forward with this project? Extremely to the sharing economy, because if you think of a school that only has a, a small budget uh, annually or monthly, by putting up a node on top of their their, their building and, and providing the power for that node, all of a sudden, anybody walking within the area of, of coverage is able to, to jump onto that node seamlessly and connect to the internet. So it will capture a lot of outbound traffic, capture a lot of inbound roaming. Um, and that's, that's very exciting for the school themselves because at a first time ever, they can look at earning revenue outside of um, being given grants and being given funds from the, from the educational establishment. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much. Fascinating discussion there. World Mobile CEO Mickey Watson joining us, uh, Watkins rather, sorry, uh, joining us from Barcelona.